Hey, welcome back. If you've been following along, we have a dragon now that flies, a fireball that hits enemy dragons and just kind of sits there and bugs out and hits more dragons and keeps acting a little bit weird. And we can't shoot fireballs yet, so we're going to fix this all up. We're going to stop playing and we're going to make it so our fireball can be shot out every time we jump and that it kind of resets and gets reused and doesn't bug out and sit there in the middle kind of acting weird. So to do that, we'll go to our prefabs folder and we'll take our fireball from the scene hierarchy right here. Click, drag, don't release it until we get down here and then let it go to turn it into a prefab we should see it turn into a prefab with the little icon change the color and we even get the little arrow as long as we're in a newer version of unity so we now have a fireball prefab and we don't necessarily need the one that's in the scene so i'll select that one that's in the scene make sure it's not the prefab one down there and just hit delete because we don't want a fireball there until we've clicked now we need to go in and create a script so we'll go to our scripts folder We'll right click on the empty area, hit create, choose C sharp script. And I'm just gonna call this shooter. It's gonna be our fireball shooting script. We'll open it up. If you try to open it and it goes in the wrong thing, remember, just go back over here, double click it again, it usually catches it and goes into the right one. Now in our update, we're gonna check for the fire one button, just like we do in jump. In fact, let's look at jump. Jump, we check if input dot get button down fire one and we do some stuff. It's exactly what we're gonna do for shooting. So we'll say if input, dot get button down remember we want button down so it's when we click down up is when we release and get button is when we hold it down we only want it on the click we'll give it the name of fire one in quotes and then we'll add a new line and some brackets so we can do more than one thing if we need to in fact we do need to do more than one thing the first thing that we need to do is spawn our projectile so we're going to say var projectile equals and we're going to use a special method called game object dot instantiate now we give it parameters so we do the open parentheses with shift nine and if we look here there are 10 overloads that's what that one of 10 means and we can hit the down arrow to see all of the different options there are quite a few different options what we need though is a way to give it a prefab our projectile or our fireball prefab and then we'll use that to spawn another one so we're going to put in the word fireball prefab, or actually let's change that. Let's name this projectile prefab. We're going to make it a little bit more generic and then we'll hit comma. Don't worry about the red underline. And then we're going to give it transform dot position and another comma. And we're going to use quaternion dot identity. Now you've got errors and it doesn't quite look right because it's not reading the right overload, but the overload that we're gonna use is number four. So if you hit down, you should see this number four one and that's kind of what we're using. Now, it doesn't matter what it's showing there. It's really just there as a tool tip and a hint to show us our options and what one it thinks we're on. It thinks that we're on the wrong one right now, but that's just because projectile prefab doesn't exist. So I'm gonna go to the end, add the semicolon, and then we're gonna create the projectile prefab. So I'm just gonna double click, control C to copy it. I'm gonna go up to line six and hit enter. And then I'm gonna put in public and we'll say, um, well, what does this need to, need to be? It needs to be a fireball. Does it need to be a fireball? No, it needs to be a game object. And we'll call this projectile prefab. So just paste, control V. So we made a public game object projectile prefab and let's get rid of the start section. So from line eight, the comment here down to the end, the closing brace, I'm gonna delete that because it's just extra noise. I'm gonna get rid of this comment too. By the way, if we're at the beginning of the line like this and we hold shift and hit delete, it'll delete the entire line. I'm even gonna get rid of these two up here. Get this nice and small. So we're instantiating a projectile prefab at this thing's position, so wherever the shooter is, and we're just using the default rotation. Um, in fact, I don't even wanna do that. I want to use the projectiles rotation, the prefabs rotation. So I'll say projectile prefab dot rotation or transform dot rotation. What that's going to do is now get me the rotation of the prefab so that we have that already pre-rotated version instead of setting it to identity. In fact, let's, um, well, we'll save it off and then maybe I'll show you what it looks like if we do it the other way. Now, I want to point a couple things out here. First off is that this is gray and it says the name can be simplified because we're in a mono behavior class. We don't necessarily need the game object qualifier here. We can actually just call instantiate. So I'm going to delete it there, but if we're not in a mono behavior, we do need it. So if you're looking for instantiate, don't see it, just add game object dot first and you should see it appear. 
The other thing I like to do is when we have a lot of parameters like this and it starts to get wide, I like to put them on new lines. So just go to the end, the beginning of that one and hit enter and then here hit enter and over here hit enter. By the way, I use control and the arrows to jump around words. So when you see me going around fast like that, it's not that I'm hitting it really quick or clicking. I hold control and just hit those arrows. So there we go. We're spawning the projectile at our position whenever we hit fire. Let's save. We'll go back into Unity. And we're going to select our blue dragon because we don't want to make the forgot to add the script mistake. We'll collapse down that audio source, add a component, and I'll add in a shooter. Now when I add the shooter, see we have the projectile prefab field that is looking for a game object. I need to assign that. If I don't assign that, we're not going to be able to spawn anything. We're just going to get an error. So we'll go to prefabs. And we'll take the fireball and click and drag. Make sure you don't just click. you got to hold it down and drop it right onto that projectile prefab section. Hit play. And let's see if our fireballs come flying out. So every time we jump, a fireball shoots out. Looking pretty good, right? We're getting there. Um, we do still have the issue of our fireballs um, kind of bugging out and slowing down. And they should disappear when they hit the enemy. Once we hit a dragon, our fireball should die. So let's change that up real quick. We'll go back to our dragon code. And here let's add an, well, let's say on collision enter. No, not here. We're in the shooter. We don't want to do that. Very good. Very good to notice that too. By the way, if you put your code in the wrong script, don't worry. Just cut it and move it to the other one. I do it all the time. It happens. You're in there working on stuff and you start working in the wrong thing. You got to fix it. So don't worry about it if it happens. But what we want to do instead is go to fireball. And we already have the on collision enter 2D. And here we want to just destroy our fireball. To do that, we'll say destroy. It's already built in. Open parentheses. And then we just give it our game object. Because we're on a mono behavior, we can just say game object. And a semicolon. Now, I want to point something out real quick while we're in here. Destroy also has an overload. If you hit comma, there's a float for T. What that is is an amount of time. So if you ever want to destroy something after a set number of seconds, like say I put in a 3 here, that would destroy it in three seconds. So I don't have to set up a whole bunch of special code. If I want to destroy something in the future, I can just do that and it will destroy it when that time comes. I just wanted to show that because I've seen a lot of people struggle with that before. Sometimes you want to destroy something and it's a neat little trick that you can use. So there we go. We've got a destroy set up on our fireball. Now if we play, we should be able to see our fireball hit, blow up and come back. Let's watch. Or I guess I shouldn't say blow up and come back. It just hits and it kind of dies there. And when we hit the rock or the trees, it dies. Um, yeah, I think we're good. We've got fireballs now flying, but we do have one issue. Let's see if I can kind of show it here. So watch my fireball out there. And let's pause as I zoom out. Look at this. I got fireballs way, way, way over here. And I don't necessarily want to do that. I want these fireballs to going to die when they either get to the edge of the screen or when they've lived for too long or something like that. I have a million different ways that we can do this. We could put in a timer to keep track of how long these fireballs have been alive. We could start off what's called a coroutine to kill them after a set amount of time. We could even call a um, destroy thing after it's been spawned. Or we could add in maybe a box collider right over here so that they always hit that collider and they blow up. Now, I already showed you that one little cool trick, so why don't we just add that? We'll just go in, go to dragons, and right at the start, we can just call destroy, give it our game object, and give it like 10 seconds. So we know that these are never going to need to be around for more than 10 seconds. Um, we don't have to worry too much about performance. We're not pooling these or anything special. We're just making them spawn and destroy. So 10 seconds later, it'll blow up. Actually, you know what? Let's turn that down to 5 seconds, because I don't think we're ever going to go further than 5 seconds out. So I'll stop playing. Come back in and try one more time. And our fireballs, if all goes well, here, let's zoom out a little bit, should just disappear after five seconds. The ones that keep going. Yep, there they go. See how they're just kind of disappearing and cleaning themselves up? They don't stay on forever. That's exactly what we wanted. And we can now jump and shoot fireballs at our dragons. Getting pretty cool, right? Let's get some more dragons in here, though, because this one red dragon isn't enough. So I'm going to go select my red dragon. Go to the prefabs folder and let's turn him into a prefab as well. And then I'll take that dragon, I'll zoom in with the mouse wheel, and then right mouse button again to drag around. And I'll zoom out just a little bit. I'm going to duplicate him and drag this one over here, duplicate again, drag it over here, 
duplicate and maybe down here and let's put like one more way up high we've got five dragons now and i think i want to move this guy so that he's way off the edge of the screen he just kind of flies in right at the start let's see what that feels like there we go we've got multiple dragons right now they're all going the same speed and it's uh still extremely hard so let's mix that up a little bit more we'll go and change these dragon speeds up Maybe make this one go six. This one will go 5.5. Oh, I put 0 0.5, 5.5. And this one will go at like, uh, let's go to four. And it changes up. I like to have them all just slightly different so that there's a little bit of variety. You'll see that as they keep passing by, like where the, um, where the dragons are relative to each other changes quite a bit just as time goes through. There we go, we got them, and it's getting there, getting pretty cool, but now I want to make them move up and down as well. So let's set that up. Let's make them go up and down. Let's go into our, um, oh, we got a couple options here. We can either do it in our move left script, or we can add a new script. I think we'll just go into move left script, and we can make it move left and do maybe some up and down. No, let's add this in a new script. So we've got that very specifically saying move left. Let's call this uh, move up and down. So we'll create a new script. We've named it move up and down, it's right here. And by the way, we can't see the full name. Look at this little slider here. If you slide this along, it can go to a list view. You can also use the mouse wheel when you're in here and it's control in the mouse wheel, sorry, to zoom in and out so we can see the full name. So we'll take this move up and down. We're gonna double click it. And we wanna use this to control the height. Now to make this happen, we're actually just gonna use a nice simple math trick. So we're gonna modify the position here with transform.position. So we'll say transform.position. This is right in our update. We're gonna say plus equals because we're gonna create a new vector three and add that. We're gonna use vector three dot up because we wanna go up and down. And we're gonna multiply that by math f dot sign. This is just giving us a sine wave. So if you've ever seen a sine wave, it's just kinda of like little squiggle, we're gonna get a number between negative one and one based on how far in we are with the time. So we'll give it a parameter and we'll choose time dot time. And then this is gonna give us a value between negative one and one. So we're gonna go either up or down depending on the direction and how much we go up or down is gonna depend on that. And then we want to uh, multiply that by time dot delta time because we still need this to be frame rate independent. We are an update and then by a delta speed or a height variance. So I'll call this height variance. And I'm gonna make that capital because I'm gonna make this public. So we'll hit control period and generate a field. And it's probably gonna generate the wrong field. Let's see, yep, it generated a vector three, but I want this to be a float. So I'll make that a float. And then I'll give it a default value of one for now. That's pretty much it. We can get rid of start. Don't need that. We can get rid of this update comment and we can get rid of these two lines up here. Remember shift delete gets rid of them, save that off. I'll even get rid of that empty line there. So this is all the code that we need to make a thing go up and down over time and have it be adjustable. Literally a single line of code and a variable. So we'll save that, we'll go back into Unity, go select our red dragon. Let's see, once it finishes recompiling, got the dragon selected and we're going to apply this to the enemy. So what we're gonna do is take this move up and down script and add it to our red dragon here. So I hit add component type move up and down and now I've added it onto this dragon but look at the other dragons let's select one they don't have it only this one has it because I wasn't in prefab edit mode now if I hit this arrow and went in and added it you would see it but I didn't so that didn't work what I need to do instead since I'm editing in the scene view if I want to make these changes apply to everything and click this little overrides button if you're in an older version of unity it's just an apply button you can just hit that to do the same thing but in the newer versions, you hit overrides and then, oh, it's a little off screen. So we're gonna drag this over just a bit. We'll hit overrides one more time. And then right here, it's showing us what the changes are. So right here, it's showing move up and down was added. That's what this little plus means. Now, if we had changed a value on there or something, it would show us that as well. But since we've only added that, that's the only thing we see. And we can hit apply all to just apply that change. There's also an apply button that may have been slightly off the screen. But now that I've applied it, if we look at these, notice that they all have the move up and down. And if I go to prefab mode, we see the move up and down is there too. Actually, I have it in there twice. So I need to remove it from the second one. I'm not sure how I did that. 
I think I messed up and I put it in there once and then I put it in there again. Well, there we go. So we want to make sure they all have it, but they only have it once. Perfect. So hit play. Now, by the way, if we had it in there twice, what we would have seen is this one dragon moving much faster than the others. So he would have worked, but he would have done the same thing. There you go. We can see our dragons are going up and down. And the game has now gotten dramatically harder. Pretty cool. Um, I think this makes it definitely more difficult. I'd go in and start playing with those variance values, those um, the sliders or the, the variables that you have there so you can adjust them and make them kind of mix it up so they don't all go exactly the same height or in the same speeds. Mix those up a little bit. And then when you're ready, if you want to build this out and share it with your friends, you know, show everybody what you've done. In the next section, I'll show you how to do a deployment how to put this up on the web in just a couple of minutes and share it off with your friends and family and let everybody else play, see all the awesome stuff you're doing. And speaking of sharing, don't forget to share this video if you liked it and hit like and thumbs up and all that fun stuff.